Hey YouTube, it's Mr. North 14 and today I'm doing a week 6 update with the Garden Home Hydroponic System featuring the smart AI system called Kelby. Okay folks, this is week 6. What has happened in week 6? Well, about the middle of week 5, about 3 days into week 5, I got a message from Kelby telling me it was time to harvest. I had harvested two days before that anyway, just because you could tell that everything was ready and time to be harvested. But it was nice to know that Kelby did let me know that one particular plant was growing out of control and that it needed to be harvested. So she did tell me when to harvest. Another thing she told me, which happened during week six, was that it was time to trim my roots. Okay, so I took all 30 of these out looked at the roots and I trimmed them if I couldn't fit them inside the cup okay um, it was a tedious job because it was like 30 plants that I had to do but it was fun it was well worth it like I said it was all part of the adventure in hydroponics you know just maintaining your plants and enjoying them like I said during this time I was also harvesting my wife and I have been harvesting since the middle of week five and we have really been enjoying it pretty much get one to two salads per day i've seen where people with even four or five members in their family have been able to get salads every day from this thing but we're getting about two salads a day since the middle of week five and like i said we're two days from uh, the end of week six so i enjoyed everything uh, I enjoyed the harvest. I enjoyed the uh, the uh, food that we've been eating. And what I've also learned is what uh, plants I don't like. And I don't like arugula. So I will not ever be getting the arugula again. I'll be getting more of the bream. I'll be getting more of the butterhead. And I'll be getting more of the uh, tatsoi or tutsoi. I don't know what they call those letters. But all them things are good. And I also noticed that during this time is that... I won't be growing any more herbs in this system. I'll probably use my herbs. I'll grow my herbs in my arrow garden because they just grow better, faster, and you know they just they're just better suited for that arrow garden system to or to to uh, grow. Plus, they're closer to where I would need them in the kitchen because I have my arrow garden close to my kitchen where I could you know add any of my herbs right then and there to anything I'm cooking or drinking you know they're right there so that would be my advice if you have a hydroponic system please own more than one you know just for the simple fact that you're gonna need more than one to do different things now I'm going to mainly use this one for salads maybe some strawberries and things like that if they ever start selling strawberries to my state I'm going to see how the tomatoes turn out to see if I want to have the tomatoes in here or in my arrow garden. It just seems to me if I can grow some good tomatoes quickly and better here, I would prefer to grow them here with the lettuce. So that's what I've been doing during week six. I've been trying out everything, seeing which what I like, what I don't like, what I like to grow on this thing. I've also been checking out the spots that are best to grow things. In. So if I want lettuce, I've noticed that my left side grows lettuce just amazing. The right side, it's okay. It grows lettuce too good. Um, <clears throat> but the, for some reason, I mean, the left side grows every the lettuce good. The right side don't grow everything is good. I don't know why that is. But, you know, it's just a nice place to see where you put things at. Uh, like I said, the herbs, some of the herbs are growing now good. The sweet basil and stuff like that. But like I said, they just do a better job in my arrow garden. And they're just easier because they're up front in the kitchen with me instead of back in here in this room. You know, they're just easier to get to. So with that said, another thing about week six is that you will have to start your new harvest. So as you can see down at the bottom right, I've got some plants starting to sprout there. That's what you're going to do during week six because you want to get those sprouts started. Okay, so in about three weeks, something like that, when this new stuff 
it's ready to be harvested and dyed, you can just put in some more stuff and you're ready to go. So it's non-stop growing. Okay, it's like I said, it was also fun to do the roots because you want to do the roots so that the roots are not growing into other Y cubes and that uh, you're not getting all that algae buildup, you know. And it's a good chance to see if your roots are healthy. Okay, like I said, uh, they make a great video on how to trim your roots and how your roots should look on the garden website and how your roots should look to know if they're healthier or not and if you see a little caramel color to them that means they're still healthy that means they're still good white roots are the best thing you want to see when you see white, white roots you know that they're really healthy everything is fine okay but they can have a little caramel color to them but if they're dark and black and things like that mm -mm, then you know they're bad you need to uh, take them out don't need to be eating them anymore okay so that's what Week five and six has brought me. That's what I've been doing. Been enjoying the produce. Been watching it grow as soon as I cut it off. Me and my wife cut it off. Uh, finding out which varieties I like and what I don't. And finding out what's hard to grow in it and what's easy to grow in it. You know, so I'm, I'm really enjoying the experience overall. Except for those, except for the beginning experience that I'm going to tell you about and that was you know when I first put it together uh, putting the holes into the columns for the water and uh, setting up the unit for Wi-Fi those were the two awful things about this whole system that I experienced so far a lot of people are complaining about the cleaning but I haven't got to that yet so I will let you know but this will be my last update as far as a week by week because I'm on the harvest stage Okay, so I'm pretty much done with everything. Now it's just when those plants down at the bottom will sprout and I substitute them in. So that's all that's really left to show you. But during this video, I'm also going to tell you some tips and tricks, some things that I've used and, and what works for me or what worked for me. Okay, because I know you've got a lot of questions about algae and things like that. So I'm going to tell you some tips. So like I said, the hardest things with this system was setting up the Wi-Fi it took me over 40 times and uh, hooking up the holes for the water in the columns now the holes in the water with the columns that wasn't that hard once you get that set up you know people should have some tricks and tricks like heating up so that it expand a little bit but I wouldn't try that one I just used a little water and a, a wrench and just turned it <laughs> Loosened it up, then it was easier to put things in. Well, I ain't go to using fire and stuff like that, most of these people say. But, uh, yeah. And another good thing is if you're on the Garden uh, Facebook webpage, that is a great resource. Please, if you're getting one of these, go there immediately. Use your uh, order code to get on immediately so that you're getting all this great advice and I know some people might try to scare you with some of the things and the cleanings but don't worry about it you're not got there yet just take the system if you're a newbie 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 to hydroponics I wouldn't say get this one as your first unit I'd say get an arrow garden then work your way up to this one okay because a lot of the fear that people are experiencing is because they knew to hydroponics and they come out with an eight to nine hundred dollar system is the first thing they get you know, get a $99 arrow garden and just walk your way through the system, you know, through it first and, and, and have an adventure and learn a few things. And then I would say the garden is your best bet because it's beautiful. Once you get it working, it's easy. No real hassle. OK, like I said, I'm on week six. I've been harvesting. Now I'm just gliding through the steps until I get to the cleaning. And that's when I'll make another video about how that was, how the cleaning process was. And, you know, because a lot of people say, oh, mine was easy. and But the majority of people say it was hard. And they didn't like it one bit. And if they knew they had to do all that, they probably wouldn't have got this system. So I'll tell you the truth on how it was for me. And like I said, I've been enjoying the system. Me and my wife have been just enjoying it, eating a salad a day watching it grow taking care of it it's just been something that's been a delight 
during the COVID-19 outbreak for the both of us. So it's really been a blessing in disguise to have to take care of something during this time. So with that said, some tips and tricks. During weeks three to five, you're going to have to battle with algae. Okay, you're going to have to battle with algae. So what I did is the first thing I did was just cover it up with tin foil. Cut it in a square, cut it down the middle, fit it over whatever sprout I had, covered it up, only left it on for about a week to a week and a half. Once you had a week and a week and a half, you take it off because you don't want any mold or moisture to build up on there because you're keeping all that heat and everything in. Okay, so after that, it should be gone. But after that, I still, because once I lifted it up, it started growing back. And that's when I just used the peroxide. Put peroxide in the bottle, squirted just a little on the rock wool on the top. Every night at 8 o'clock when my light turned off for four hours, that's when I would do it immediately at 8 o'clock. I'd come in, turn on the bedroom light, find out which ones were turning, just squirt a little bit on them. Leave them alone. After a while, the plant is going to grow. It's going to shade. And you're not going to have to worry about it. And that's where I'm at now. So that's what I did. Another thing I did is that I purchased some grapefruit seed extract. Okay? There's a way you add the extract. For every gallon of water, you use 10 drops. Okay? I didn't use 10 drops in the beginning. I only used 5 for every gallon just to be sure okay I have a, ten, a two gallon uh, water thing uh, bucket I have a two gallon water bucket okay so I would add ten drops because I would add five per gallon I'm supposed to add ten but I wanted to be sure and make sure I wasn't hurting my plants with it that's how I did it in the beginning okay now I use ten per gallon of water but I also use it I also put it in, I use the grapefruit seed extract when I'm adding my nutrients to my water. So, Kelby has a problem where, I mean, Garden has a problem where all their material is not up to date. One thing you might read might tell you to do something this way, and then you might go online and it'll tell you to do something in a totally, entirely different way. Like, case in point, they say for every two gallons of water, use one teaspoon of nutrients now they say with every gallon of water I don't know if this is the old or the new for every gallon of water use one teaspoon of nutrients I use the first way that I read for every two gallons I use one teaspoon of nutrients this is what you see here so what I do in that two gallon water bucket the first I fill it up one gallon with warm water so that I can dissolve the plant food the nutrients food. So I put one tablespoon in in with one gallon of water that's heated. And I stir it up real good so that it's dissolved. Then I add cold water on top of that. Then I add, once I add add the the extra gallon of water so that I have two gallons, I add the 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 grapefruit extract so I got two gallons so I started out with five droplets so I just added ten droplets to that then I would pour that in my reservoir so now my plants was getting the nutrients as well as the grapefruit extract to take care of the algae buildup now I have no algae buildup on the inside because of that no algae buildup on the inside of my columns okay so that's good so the grapefruit extract is working. I can tell that it's working. So then I moved up to putting the 10 droplets of, of a grapefruit seed extract per gallon, per gallon of water. That's a two gallon thing. So I would mix the first one with warm water. I throw my plant food in, mix it up real good. Then I do another, put another gallon of water that was cold to take care of the hot water and make sure everything is good and then I would put 20 drops of the grapefruit extract into the water okay 10 per gallon and then I would just put it in the tank and from there I haven't had any issues with algae 
Okay, I have issues with the algae on the top of the rock wool that shows the light there, but I don't have any algae problems actually inside my unit. Okay, because you don't see any of that algae building up on the columns inside. So it's been working. So that is my tips and tricks as far as how to use the grapefruit seed extract, and it is working. Another thing with the tinfoil, only use it about a week or a week and a half. That way you're not getting any mold or sliminess on your roots and things like that. Take it off and just use the peroxide to spray directly on the rock wool, and that'll take care of it. And like I said, I did it every night at 8, 8 p.m. I sprayed the peroxide on it, or I would wait a day or two. You know, and then after that, when my plants grew where they had enough shade, didn't have to worry about that issue anymore. So I hope this helps. This is Mr. Noor 14 with my week six update. Peace out.